Hello, everybody. My name is Meg, and this is Bego Replay, the weekly show to keep you up to date with the latest news and reviews from Bego Games. Let's get started. It appears that some gamers were lucky enough to snag a copy of the new Tomb Raider game earlier than they should have. Although the game was officially released as of March 5th, some branches of the UK supermarket giant Tesco were already selling copies of the game on March 4th to Hunger Gamers. The news came after MCV confirmed this, saying that they had purchased a copy of the game for £32. I myself have heard similar stories about other retail giants, so this comes as no surprise. You get a crowd of anxious gamers, and you mix it with a few disinterested employees, and the result is opened boxes and pointed fingers. Recently, the PlayStation Vita had its price cut in Japan, and according to Game Watch, it has been a successful move for Sony. It turns out that since the price cut went into effect on February 28th, sales of the PlayStation Vita have increased by a factor of four. This quadruple quantity of portables being sold was a result of Sony cutting both versions of the Vita to 19,980 yen, which roughly translates to $214. Unfortunately, Sony is unlikely to offer a price cut overseas. The company announced that it has no plans for a price drop in other territories due to the decisions regarding price drops being made on a region-by-region -region basis. In all honesty, if somebody offered me a Vita for $200, I'd probably take it. But at this point, it's not something I'm dying to have, and this news isn't a major disappointment. Besides, with the current trend, there will be a new Vita coming out in a year that directly integrates with the PS4. Next, electronic arts and microtransactions aren't two things you really want to hear working together, but it isn't something that's going to change anytime soon. The company, however, caught a bit of heat when they stated that all their future games would include microtransactions, and have since come back to clarify what they really meant. I made a statement at the conference along the lines of, we'll have microtransactions in our games, and the community read that to be, all games. And that's really not true said EA CFO Blake J. Jorgensen at the 2013 Wedbush Transformational Technology Conference. According to Jorgensen, all their mobile games will contain microtransactions, but only because they will all be a part of the free-to-play model. Games that appear on consoles and PC will see no microtransactions, and will instead receive extensions. He goes on to use Battlefield Premium as an example. You're going to see extensions off products like Battlefield Premium, which are simply not microtransactions, he said. I don't waste my money on microtransactions, and I personally feel it's a poor business model. There are better things that could be developed and added to a game, be it just a mobile game or a console game. Free-to-play is great, but microtransactions just end up making everything pay to win. Up next, Mike Capps, former president of Epic Games, who stepped down last year, is no longer at the company. The news comes from a post he made on his own Facebook page. When we announced that I wanted to transition out of my leadership role at Epic, the plan was for a continued but less active role service on the board of directors, and ideally, being that eccentric, semi-retired guy who still comes to play tests and gold parties. I'm sad to say that plans have changed, and as of February 11th, I'm no longer affiliated with Epic Games," he said. This isn't a completely out-of-nowhere announcement, as the staff at Epic was made aware of the news before Caps made it known to the public. Why he'd announced it on his own Facebook page instead of telling an actual news outlet is beyond me. Kids these days. Last, Jason West, co-founder of Respawn, has reportedly left the company due to family issues. West, formerly the president of Infinity Ward, which he started up with Vince Zampella, launched Respawn with Zampella in 2010. The pair was dismissed from Infinity Ward and subsequently became embroiled in lawsuits from Activision. They claimed they were unfairly let go, whilst Activision asserted the pair had been secretly working with EA during their time at Infinity Ward. A settlement was eventually reached. Great, I guess. Now back to the studio for the week's reviews. Chris? Thanks for that, Meg. Aaron reviewed YS1 and 2 Chronicles Plus on PC. He gave it an excellent score of 4.4 with his summary. YS1 and 2 Chronicles Plus gives us another chance to replay the first two games of the long-running franchise. Minimum changes do not prevent the fact that YS1 and 2 are some of the best RPGs to be made. That's it for this week's reviews. Timothy Miller has also started his new series, Bago Quick Look, in which he takes a look at the newest games he's able to get his hands on. This week's video was of Tomb Raider, which you can find in the description below. There'll also be an annotation at the end of this video. That's it for this week. All articles mentioned in this video will be in the description below. Remember, you can like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date on all the week's latest news and reviews. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.